up next. On a special Your Pittsburgh. Class of 2016. Our favorite stories from this year. Star Trek Beyond was one of the biggest movies of the summer, and we loved hanging out with Spock, Green Tree native Zachary Quinto. Do you remember coming here? Oh my god, yeah. His story of growing up here and the KDKA personality he encountered years ago. They paid for my ice cream, and then we became <laughs> friends. How about that time we heated things up? Oh no. my gosh, it's like the sun. A group of us at KDKA learned how to turn glass into art. That's beautiful. Find out where you can give it a try. Posh purses that are a big hit. I'm Sarah Arbogast. Maybe you've noticed a celebrity carrying one of these purses. They're made by a local company, and I'll tell you where you can get one, too. Plus, what's in a name? From Mars to 84 to SNPJ, you'll be surprised by how some local towns got theirs. And just in time for dining out during the holidays, two restaurants under the same roof. David and I tried them both. Mm -hmm. From KDKA TV, this is your Pittsburgh with David Highfield and Susan Copen. Hi, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of Your Pittsburgh. I'm David Highfield. And I'm Susan Copen. Tonight, we're taking a look at some of our favorite stories from 2016. And let's start with the stars that we interviewed this year. Yeah, we have quite a few to choose from. We profiled actress Margot Bingham, singer Josh Groban, actor Patrick Wilson, and we even interviewed Spock. Okay, well, the actor who plays Spock in the Star Trek movie, Zachary Quinto, who grew up in Green Tree. Yeah, he is a big-time movie star now, but this summer, back when it was much warmer. I had a chance to spend some time with him during a visit to the Berg. It looks pretty awesome. As we walk around Point State Park with Zachary Quinto, he takes pictures of his hometown. Do you remember coming here? Oh my God, yeah. I remember the Arts Festival music stage was here. He's so down to earth, it's easy to forget he's a movie star until someone wants a picture with him. Oh, just nice to meet you, man. My man Have a good night. Be well, thanks, buddy. And it's the role of Spock in the latest Star Trek movies that's made him a household name. Fear of death is illogical. Fans also love him for his dark roles, like the serial killer on the TV show Heroes. I remember you. And he performs on stage, here in the revival of The Glass Menagerie. I thought perhaps you wished for a gentleman calling. Zachary grew up in Green Tree, the younger of two boys. I was really enamored of the news growing up. And KDKA, you'll be happy to know, was the news channel of our household. And when he was about 11, he met a KDKA personality at Dairy Queen. Zachary had left, but then realized he had forgotten to pay, so he rushed back. And Bob and Lisa Pompiani were behind me in line, and they thought it was so cool that I came back that they paid for my ice cream. And then we became friends. <laughs> oh, and it turns out a young Zachary was once interviewed on KDKA about a volunteer project to help other kids. I think that self-esteem is so important in kids, and especially with school. Zachary went to high school at Central Catholic. This was my old room. English teacher Mary Ann Lynch is in this old yearbook picture with him. She was a, a, a big supporter of my shenanigans when I was in high school. Of course, he was part of the school's theater productions. He knew then that this really was what he wanted to do with his life. And they both remember what he did in class. He would, at times, stare out the window at CMU, thinking, this is where I'm going to be after I leave Central Catholic. And I was just dreaming of, you know, being, uh, being in a production at Carnegie Mellon School of Drama. His dream came true. He wound up studying musical theater at CMU. Some of his early TV appearances include Six Feet Under, Charmed, and playing a director on Lizzie McGuire. Touchdown and smile. But fans now know him for a variety of work, from American Horror Story. Man, I've always been self-aware to the wall street drama margin call to his most well-known role as the new spot you will experience fear he tells me it meant a lot to him to get the approval of the man who originated the role leonard nimoy i shall simply say good luck i lost my own father when i was very young and they were around the same age and you know the physical resemblance is undeniable and he was an incredible friend and uh, an influence on me for the better part of the decade that I knew him. 
before he passed. Zachary says he's grateful for his career and grateful to be from Pittsburgh. He tries to get back a couple of times a year. Mary Ann Lynch tells me she'll never forget when he paid her a surprise visit. And I turned and there was Zach. And, you know, we hugged each other and I said to him, our eyes both teared up and I said, I am so proud of you. And he said back to me, thank you for letting me dream. And those are things I think no matter how long you teach, um, you know, you live for. Zachary says Pittsburgh is always part of him. In fact, he can slip into Pittsburghese at a moment's notice. Oh yeah, I got that done, no problem, but you know. <laughs> But seriously, he says the Berg instilled in him a respect for others, and he loves coming back. It's always good to come home. Uh, I feel strongly connected to this place. It's good stuff, and Bob Pompiani is joining us now. Do you remember this? you remember buying the ice cream? Absolutely, and my wife was the first to talk to Zach, and you know she lives in Green Tree with her mother, and when we visited my mother-in-law, we saw kids all and talked to them all the time. He left, he came back. We were impressed. And next thing you know, look at him, he's a big time actor now. And he had a plan, good inspirational story for a lot of young kids out there. He followed the plan and now look at him. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm guessing if, if he saw you in Dairy Queen now, he would probably return the favor and buy I want something. a blizzard, Zachary Quinto, yes, <laughs> oh, blizzard you, baby. Oh, is you a blizzard? <laughs> All right, Bob, thanks so much. All right. As we continue with our favorite stories of 2016, this one is about two talented women, Pittsburghers, who are taking the fashion world by storm. Yeah, we love telling you about startup companies. And as Sarah Arbogast learned, what this company makes is attracting the attention of celebrities. They're high style and high quality. We get our leather from Columbia. It's Altagama leather, which is like the highest quality grade leather you can source. Some even have a Pittsburgh touch. This one named for Kia Tomlin, wife of Steelers coach Mike Tomlin. Designing handbags is a dream come true for Sandra Cadavi. I really do have to be inspired. I can't just say today I'm going to design. She's been sketching purses for years and finally decided to create the real thing. She turned to artisans in her home country of Colombia to make the handbag. But it was during a trip to Hollywood when business took a drastic turn. Former E! News host Juliana Rancic spotted one of Sandra's creations. I literally emptied it out and I gave it to her. A picture posted on social media of Rancic with the bag changed things forever. Within a three week period, 200 orders, I mean it was just insane. Celebrities like Brooke Burke and Jessica Alba now have bags. Bachelor winner Catherine Gudici is a big fan. This is the one that Celine Dion requested in white. Sandra gets a kick out of seeing her bags in magazines. Her business partner loves seeing Pittsburghers with the purses. So if I'm walking down the street and I see somebody that I do not know carrying our handbag, somebody just an everyday life mode, I think that's what really gets me excited. There's also jewelry, handmade pieces dipped in 24 karat gold. Tennis star Venus Williams is seen here wearing a pair of earrings. Both the bags and jewelry are sold at Kia Tomlin's store in East Liberty. She designs clothes and says Sandra's work is a perfect match. They're so elegant and yet versatile, um, and it's a nice accessory to be able to show with the clothing. For your Pittsburgh, I'm Sarah Arbogast. And just in time for the holidays, they have launched a new collection of jewelry. Prices starting at $60. The purses more expensive. They start at $195. Yeah, and in addition to online sales and selling in Kia Tomlin's boutique in East Liberty, stores in Denver and San Francisco now carry the purses too. Still to come. Who would ever think I'd be blowing glass? See what happens when a group of us from KDKA get in touch with our artistic sides. If it falls, let it go. <gasps> Susan and I check out two new restaurants that opened this year and discover a dish that has quite an effect. This left Susan coping speechless. <laughs> That's very difficult to do. <laughs> and after the break. What do you guys call yourselves here? Martians. Mars 84, Glen Campbell. We get to the bottom of some of our area's most unusual town names. Stay with us. Welcome back to your Pittsburgh, honored with two Mid-Atlantic Emmy Awards.
Welcome back to our special best of 2016, your Pittsburgh. Yeah, every show we ask you to vote on which story you want to see in a segment called You Wanted to Know. Well, this year you wanted to know about the Cathedral of Learning, so we revealed some of its secrets. We also told you about Eleanor Roosevelt's connection to Norvelt, Westmoreland County. And we took you to Pittsburgh's only wooden street. It really is made of wood blocks. But tonight we are revisiting some local towns with very unusual names. 84, Mars, S. NPJ. Where'd those names come from? Let's begin with the place that's also a number, 84. Where'd that come from? There's so many stories and there's these great stories about it too, about why it's called 84. Do you have any guesses why it's called 84? I have no idea. I thought it had something to do with 84 Lumber. Many people think it was named after 84 Lumber, which is headquartered here. And some think the company got its name from the CEO's football days. It was named after Joe Hardy for the number that he wore when he played for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, wait a minute. The problem is that Joe Hardy never played for the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> 84 Lumber is actually named after the community. So where did 84 get its name? Well, it used to be called Smithville until they wanted a post office. Since there was already a Smithville on the other end of the state, the postmaster picked a new name. And the train that delivered the mail may have been the inspiration. The town happened to be stop 84 along the postal route. So that's where it actually gets its name. Now to Indiana County in a place called Glen Campbell. Like a if the name makes you think of this Glen Campbell here singing one of his big hits, you're not alone. He did visit once, but the borough isn't named after him. Turns out Glen is the Scottish word for valley. The Campbell was the last name of the head of a local coal company. Okay, time to go to Mars. No, not the planet. I'm talking about Mars Butler County. What do you guys call yourselves here? Martians. That's right, as in little green men and women. They even have a flying saucer in the middle of town. As for the name, Let's go back in time. Way back in the 1800s, the first settlement here was actually known as Overbrook. But then they ran into a problem. There was another Overbrook in Pennsylvania. It was confusing. So the thinking is the new name was to honor a local judge. We figured it, it came from his name. It was Marshall, and they shortened it down to Mars. But there's also a theory Marshall's wife suggested Mars because she loved astronomy. One thing's for sure, this historical marker that credits a star named Mars isn't quite right. Back then, they weren't sure what a star was or a planet, and whoever did it just really kind of missed the boat. Finally, to Lawrence County, and another name that might catch your attention, SNPJ. The community is picturesque, but this time of year, only 14 people live here. It's, it's a lovely place. Tim Jurgles one of them. Does it get a little lonely here over the winter? It certainly does. I'm glad you guys came up. <laughs> Summer, though, is a whole different story. The place comes alive. People rent cabins. There's a festival. And as for the name, it's short for... Slovenska Narodna Podporna Jednota, which is the Slovene language version of Slovene National Benefit Society. That's a group started more than 100 years ago to help immigrants coming from the country of Slovenia in Europe. The society built a rec center here in the 60s, and SNPJ eventually became a borough. We're known as the smallest borough with the longest name. Yeah, SNPJ, way shorter. <laughs> yeah. All right, now it's your turn to get involved. We want you to vote. Tell us what you want to know for our next show. Do you want to know why people in Latrobe can't agree on how to pronounce their town's name? Is it Latrobe or Latrobe? There's a good reason for the confusion. Or do you want to know about the Pittsburgh Police Motorcycle Unit? They started patrolling on Harley Davidson's more than 100 years ago. And why do they have those sidecars? It's not to transport suspects. Let us know which one you want to know about. Go to kdk.com slash your Pittsburgh and vote. Whichever story gets more votes, we'll have for you on our next show. Still to come on our best of 2016 show. Maybe there are places you'll want to have dinner over the holidays. Susan and I visit two restaurants that open this year under the same roof. Oh, wow. Isn't that good? 
But up next, game on. Things get competitive when KDKA goes to the Pittsburgh Glass Center. I think mine's the best, hands down. Mine actually might be the best. Find out whose creation got the most viewer votes. Stay with us. You're watching Your Pittsburgh on KDKA-TV with David Highfield and Susan Copen. Welcome back to our best of 2016 Your Pittsburgh special. And if you are looking for something different to do, we found it this year. Absolutely. We're talking about the Pittsburgh Glass Center in the city's Friendship neighborhood. They actually show you how to work with glass that's incredibly hot so you can create something unique. And a group of us here at KDKA decided to give it a try and it sort of brought out our competitive spirit. Experts at the Pittsburgh Glass Center make it look easy. As close to center as we can get. They shape 1800 degree glass into works of art. But what can we make? Our KDKA team is made up of Lynn Hayes Freeland, Rich Walsh, Kim Gable, and David and me. It's going to be a super crazy organic shape, just like that. Oh, that is really cool. Zach Lehue and John Sirockman give us instructions. Right, dab. Kind of like we're putting sprinkles on a really hot ice cream cone. Start blowing now. Yep. We have a chance to blow into a pipe to actually create a super thin glass bubble. That's beautiful. But this is just for practice and nothing we get to keep. Our main event is what you're about to see. Is this a competition? I mean, I need to know that. Well, it kind of turns into one. Lynn and David decide to create flowers made of glass while Kim, Rich and I are making paperweights. We go in, we find the layer of glass. Everything starts with clear glass from a 2,000 degree furnace. Oh so my God, it's like down. the sun. <laughs> yeah. The pipe it's on is immediately cooled, just so we can touch it. Am I pinching in the same place? Anywhere you want. So I'm starting to get nervous about it falling. That's all right. get nervous? No, you're fine. Okay. If it falls, let it go. <gasps> The goal is to act fast using tools to pull and mold the glass before it cools off and gets hard. You made this look easy. This is a workout. We add chips of glass for color. I mean, just to watch the changes here within yeah. the last like 30 seconds, it's yeah. really incredible. Oh, and what about that competition? I'm hearing the professionals actually saying it too behind the scenes that mine actually might be the best. Yeah, make sure I win. <laughs> <laughs> I think it looks beautiful so far. Just saying. I would be surprised if I didn't win. Okay, time to unveil our finished products. Lynn's flower, Kim's paperweight, David's flower, Rich's paperweight, and finally, my work of art, all originals that we created. This was like chemistry and science and art, like all mixed into one. I thought it was a great experience. I would definitely come back with my kids. Who would ever think I'd be blowing glass? Um, but now I'm officially a glass blower. And Kim Gable joins us now. I'd forgotten how competitive we got. I know, just watching that again and seeing the intensity in all of our faces, uh, especially when the instructors were talking to us. I mean, we mm -hmm. were taking that pretty seriously. It was fun, but competitive and too. Slipping the money. I know, yeah. I didn't see that one the first time either. Yeah. That was funny. And we actually asked the viewers who did the best job, right. and I believe Lynn Hayes Freeland yes. won, got the Viewer's Choice Award. Which is, <laughs> which is great because she chose to do the flower. And, yeah. and for me, I thought that was a little too ambitious. Yeah. I'm like, let's stick with the paperweight. And I thought my paperweight was beautiful, but those flowers were something too. They were beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's a cool place. It All is. right, thanks so much. The center's classes end right before Christmas, then start up again after New Year's. Still to come on our best of 2016 show, Time to Eat. Susan and I are actually sampling two restaurants. Stay with us. Stand by to fade in three, two, one, and fade. Contact us on Facebook or Twitter. We want to know what you want to see. After all, our show is called Your Pittsburgh. 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 And we continue now with our best of 2016 special. Our favorite part of every show because we love to eat, is the restaurant segment. And we visited some great places this year. And the one that we're featuring tonight may be perfect if you're looking for a spot to go over the holidays. It really is two restaurants, one upstairs and one downstairs. Walking down Forbes Avenue, Revel and Roost draws you in. Downstairs is Revel. Upstairs, a whole other place called Roost. Revel, 
stands for having a good time, right? First floor is more energy, uh, more excitement. The second story is more fine dining, more romantic. Roost, the place to relax. David and I begin downstairs where there's a cool bar, an open kitchen. The food is described as new American with a southern twist. We order plates to share, fried quail and waffles, barbecue, beef brisket, pizza, and their signature Revel Burger. Now that is a burger. It's actually stuffed with short ribs and bacon. And it's so tall, that first bite can be tricky. <laughs> David plunges forward and it's delicious. It's a little messy, but it's worth the mess. It's really good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we also discover some surprises like these wonderful pickled veggies. Best carrot I've ever had in my life. Okay, time to move upstairs for our main course. Roost is a sophisticated space with food to match. David gets the generously sized pork chop and butternut squash dumplings for me. Mm, this left Susan Coping speechless. <laughs> That's very difficult to do. <laughs> we top the meal off with dessert, donuts with a maple espresso glaze. Delicious. All right, what I learned from that is not to talk with my mouth full. I'm always doing <laughs> I that. I always do that. <laughs> well, again, it's called Revel and Roost. It's right off Market Square, and we have more info for you at kdk.com slash yourpittsburgh. And this New Year's Eve, they are having a party. It's downstairs in Revel, then a special dinner plan for Roost. Yeah, and joining us now is Ian Smith. He is the photographer and editor behind the scenes here at Your Pittsburgh. So you're with us. When you're shooting these restaurants. Absolutely. Segments. It's my favorite segment because we get to eat. We get to stuff our faces, and it's absolutely delicious. Yes, and this one always orders extra I food. I always over order. But <laughs> Which I, do I don't that, mind. I do that for you. We never leave with anything on the table. No. Yeah. Although I feel bad for you, because you're working. You have to wait to eat until after. Well, you know, small sacrifices. It's it's still pretty good, so, you know, <laughs> it does. it's okay. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Here's to many more restaurant segments in the new year. And before we go, a reminder to join us on Facebook right after this show. I just like the Your Pittsburgh Facebook page and chime in to our live Live chat. And that's it for tonight. From all of us here, thanks for watching. From our family to your family, we wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. We'll see you next month with a brand new episode. Hey, all right, that was a good looking show. Everybody have a happy holidays. Stand by to fade in three, two, one, and fade.